News 25 is brought to you by Golden Casino Group, where you'll always find great fun, good food, and fantastic entertainment, all at Gold Town, Lakeside, and the Pahrump Nugget. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight, Northwest Academy owners are transported back to Nye, and NHP tracks accident reports during yesterday's storm. News 25 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local coverage you can count on. The Chapuis are seen in court once again. It's Friday, February 15th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. The couple who own the now closed boarding school in Amargosa were in court this morning in Beatty. Marcel and Patricia Chapuy were picked up by law enforcement officials yesterday and transported back to Nye County to face charges of child abuse and endangerment. The couple were in Beatty Justice Court this morning. The bail amounts have been adjusted according to the summary of arrest from the Nye County Sheriff's Office this morning and are now set at $100,000 for the 72-year-old Marcel and $120,000 for Patricia, who is 66. Both are facing charges of 43 counts each of child endangerment, and Patty is facing an additional two counts of first-degree child abuse for alleged altercations involving students. The pair is booked into the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center yesterday afternoon. News 25 has learned that all students were removed from the school yesterday, assisted by the Department of Child and Family Services, and either sent home or found alternative placements. The staff was required to stay until the last child left in the late afternoon and has told News 25 that they have never received their final paychecks. The School for At-Risk Youth is officially closed. The arrest of the Northwest Academy owners took place after Caleb Hill, who is a teacher, was arrested in January. This was following a Nye County Sheriff's Office investigation into abuse and neglect allegations. The allegations led to uncovering a shocking discovery that the students were allegedly exposed to contaminated water, which police say had high levels of arsenic, which can cause long-lasting effects, including cancer. The Division of Environmental Protection ordered that only bottled water be used for cleaning, cooking, and drinking. Bathing with the water left rashes on the children's skin. Documents show that Marcel, who is a psychologist, and his wife stopped treating the water for contaminants. The Division of Public and Behavioral Health is revoking the school's child care license. Well, it's an alarming number. Nevada Highway Patrol tracked the amount of accidents on Las Vegas Valley freeways during yesterday's storm. The high number of collisions, they say, is from drivers not taking extra precautions on the rain-slicked roadways. NHP urges everyone to slow down because of reduced visibility and standing water on the highway, which, if you're going too fast, can cause you to hydroplane and lose control. As of last night, NHP reports from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m., there were a startling 110 crashes. This involves two hit and run, 39 injury accidents, and 69 property damage. That is triple the amount of crashes they say occur on a day with no rain. News 25 will return after this break. You're watching KPVM News 25, local coverage you can count on. Welcome back. Here's Rhonda Van Winkle with today's News Across Nevada. Assistant to the Secretary for Rural Development, Ann Hazlitt, announced today that the United States Department of Agriculture is giving funding priority in a key grant program for applications to address opioid use, misuse in rural communities. The USDA may award up to 30 special consideration points for distance learning and telemedicine program applications for projects that provide opioid treatment services in 220 at-risk counties that are identified by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The deadline for these applications is April 15, 2019. USDA may award 10 special consideration points for opioid-related DLT projects or for those that provide science, technology, engineering, and math education as their primary purpose. The application deadline for these projects is May 15, 2019. All applications can be submitted electronically at grants.gov. 
Apply for the Las Vegas 2019 Class of Emerging Leaders, a free entrepreneurship IP education course provided by the U.S. Small Business Administration. Each participating entrepreneur will learn immediate ways to improve their business and will create a three-year strategic plan for growth. Seats are limited and you're encouraged to register soon. To qualify, you must be a small business owner with annual revenues between 250,000 to 10 million. And you must have been in business for at least three years and have at least one employee other than yourself. For more information, go to interise.org. That's I-N-T-E-R-I-S-E, interise.org. Nevada Attorney General Aaron Ford says, as tax day approaches, scammers are finding new ways to take advantage of this stressful time. Scammers are known to use various tactics to make their calls seem legitimate. They persuade victims with caller ID that look like the IRS is calling. They use fake IRS badge numbers and they use listings including information like the last four digits of the victim's social security number. Scammers scare the victim into sending money through transfers or prepaid debit cards, and they often threaten victims with arrest or deportation or loss of various licenses. The Nevada Attorney General says the IRS does not and will not initiate contact about a tax obligation by phone, email, or social media. If you suspect a caller is a scammer, hang up the phone and call the IRS directly. Nevada Highway Patrol is warning state residents of a phone scam claiming to be from the state police. Nevada Highway Patrol said in a statement that people in the Reno area have received phone calls from a blocked number. The caller is saying he's with the state police, that the person has an outstanding warrant for their arrest. The caller tells the person to go to Walgreens and get a money, uh, get a money order or to pay the warrant. Uh, if questioned, the caller hangs up and HP says troopers and state officials will not call or text regarding a warrant, which is instead handled by the court systems in each county. So anyone who gets a similar call is asked to contact their local police department. There is another scam going around again, and this one had a local man sending money. The caller has someone tell a senior that their grandchild has been arrested. They then ask for assistance requesting that you give them a prepaid credit or phone card. This is a scam and do not fall for it. If they have any information about a relative of yours being taken into custody, hang up the phone and call the detention center yourself. Please call the Nye County Sheriff's Department if you have any doubt about any scam. The number is 775-751-7000. I'm Rhonda Van Winkle and this has been your news across Nevada. Well, a recent survey shows that disruptive behavior is increasing in classrooms across the United States. The online survey conducted between October 4th and November 14th included responses from 41 public school districts representing a mix of urban, suburban, and rural schools of different sizes and varying racial and financial demographics. According to a new survey of nearly 1,900 elementary school teachers, administrators, and staff, the trend is alarming teachers who often feel they lack guidelines and training to address the growing number of disturbances. Behavioral disruptions, including tantrums, bullying, and defiance, increased in kindergarten through fifth grade classrooms. These negative behaviors cut into instructional time for all students. Teachers estimated that they lose nearly two and a half hours of instructional time each week as a result of behavior disruptions, which adds up to nearly three weeks of lost instructional time each year. Teachers, administrators, and staff disagreed on the reasons for worsening behavior. Administrators were more likely than teachers to point to trauma in the family and untreated mental illness as causes. Teachers, on the other hand, were more likely to blame overexposure to electronic devices and inadequate playtime in addition to changes in parenting styles. Officials say the challenge is ensuring teachers are aware of effective classroom management strategies. School districts and individual schools should clearly communicate their policies for addressing behavioral issues and ensure teachers and staff receive appropriate training and support. For example, all participating school district administrators reported their districts employ positive behavioral interventions and supports, known as PBIS. Yet only 57% of teachers confirmed they use these proven practices frequently in their work. 
Only 63% said that they had received training to implement this approach. News 25 will return on the other side of this break. News 25 is brought to you by Bill and Robin Wall, injury attorneys. Injured? Need money? Get Bill and Robin, your local Pahrump injury attorneys. The Children's Business Fair recently held in San Diego gives children the opportunity to become entrepreneurs for a day. They create the products and they sell them to the public, learning what it takes to make a business run. Ed News Feed reporter Kim Martinez takes us to San Diego to check out the Children's Business Fair. I'm Kim Martinez with Ed News Feed. What happens when entrepreneurial spirit meets the creativity and imagination of children? Well, the sky's the limit on the new products that are popping up everywhere at children's business fairs, just like this one in San Diego. I'm selling a tutu kit. All decked out in colors and tool, Kaylee is the perfect model for her adorable idea. She's selling DIY tutu kits called the Confident Kid, so other little girls can feel the confidence she does when she wears her tutu. Tool and a tool, I mean, I mean ribbon and a, and a ribbon marker, elastic. Confidence seems to be contagious at these children's business fairs, which started a few years ago as one great idea from a school in Texas called Acton Academy. Acton's concept has been snowballing ever since, and kids of all ages are open for business. Just the trees. And did you make them? with my mom. <laughs> we actually make truffle trees. The Lorax actually teaches us compassion, and that's what we're trying to instill in him at such a young age. The earlier, the better for us. Here, the more creativity, the better, and it certainly helps to be the booth with the fluffiest, the gooeyest, and even the most magical of products. Magic bottle is like when you put it upside down, it goes down. And it makes magic and it also has sparkles in it, it has pom-poms and oil. The Children's Business Fairs have spread all over the nation. To find one near you, go to childrensbusinessfair.org. For Ed Newsfeed, I'm Kim Martinez. And the Grammys were the big talk of the week in entertainment. Maria Guerra has that and more. Nearly 20 million people watched the 2019 Grammys hosted by Alicia Keys. Winning the most awards were Childish Gambino and Casey Musgraves, who earned four trophies each. The awards show, which lasted almost four hours and didn't phase most music fans after all, that's about the same time as most sports games. The Super Bowl of the music world made, a strong, made history with a strong message to women. The show opened with Alicia Keys bringing her crew on stage. Lady Gaga, Jada Pinkett Smith, Jennifer Lopez, and Michelle Obama spoke about the power of music and how it changed their lives. The audience went wild over the former first lady, sealing her mark in history. The night had some strong performances, particularly by women, including Cardi B and Brandi Carlile, who killed it with the performance of her song, The Joke. Janelle Monet brought down the house with her performance of Make Me Feel, which had obvious influences of Michael and Janet Jackson mixed with a little prince to boot. Monet even moon moonwalked across stage and featured dancing vaginas. The star-studded evening honored the great Dolly Parton and Diana Ross. Ross, who turned 75 this week, was introduced on stage by her adorable nine-year-old grandson. Springs Preserve is inviting everyone to celebrate the contributions of African Americans have made to Southern Nevada's history and culture at its 10th annual Black History Month Festival. The event will take place on Saturday, February 16th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and will feature family-friendly fun like live music, spoken word, hip-hop performers, a presentation honoring civil rights activist Dr. James McMillan, and much more. Springs Preserve, located at 333 South Valley View Boulevard in Las Vegas, will also feature arts and crafts for kids, carnival games, and face painting during this event. Visit the Springs Preserve website for more information. Following his successful debut in, at Win Las Vegas in January, award-winning actor and comedian Chris Tucker will make his return to the Encore Theater for a second headlining engagement in April 2019. For one night only, Tucker will bring his critically acclaimed stand-up to the stage on Saturday, April 6th, with two shows at 7.30 p.m. and 10 p.m. Tickets for both performances go on sale today. 
KPDM featured movies on Channel 25.1. This weekend are Saturday at 1 p.m., the 1994 classic Little Women, and at 9 p.m. from 2002, The Time Machine. On Sunday at noon, the 2005 sci-fi action film, Aeon Flux at 7 p.m., and Deborah Winger and Harrison Ford in The Love Story, An Officer and a Gentleman. Enjoy numerous award-winning performances of Shirley MacLaine, Deborah Winger, and Jack Nicholson in the tear-jerking classic film Terms of Endearment, beginning at 9.30. Reporting for News 25, I'm Maria Guerra, and this is your Entertainment This Week. And Leanne Luna and Jess Rossner invite interested parties to get involved in the free diabetes prevention course offered now at Nye Communities Coalition. One in three Americans has prediabetes and doesn't even know that they do. So to find out if you do, you can come see Leanne at our prompt office mm -hmm. and we have pre-screening tool kits to decide if you're at risk for diabetes. People that have a relative who has, pre has diabetes in the past. If you also don't have a lot of physical activity, or you are overweight. With the Ni National Diabetes um, Prevention Program mm -hmm. it is a year-long program where in the first 16 weeks we meet for an hour a week for life coaching sessions mm -hmm. and then we go every other week for a period of time and then once a month and it's got really good outcomes as far as people have lost weight, people who have pre-diabetes have gotten better results, talking to their doctor and seeing their doctor less often. So you can join anytime? Uh, actually, it's, it's a year-long course, and we need you to join within the first couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's once, once the couple of weeks have gone, we'll close the course and move, move on with it. And they meet once a week at Nye Community Coalition? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's um, Tuesday, February 19th is the first one. Mm -hmm. And it will be in one of the classrooms in the large building from 3 to 4 in the afternoon. All right. And is there a cost? Uh, it's free. How do you register? Um, just call me at uh, Nye Community Coalition 775-727-9970, extension 204. Get ready for the annual USO show coming to the Saddle West next weekend. It's going to be on Saturday, February 23rd at Saddle West. Tickets are still $15 pre-sale and $20 at the door. This helps fund our Veterans Food Pantry at the VFW. The show starts at 6 p.m. and usually goes till about 8, 8.30. It's about a two, two and a half hour show. We're looking at singing and dancing and just a whole lot of variety. And you can buy your tickets for the USO show at the VFW or Prompt Party Store. You can contact me at 775-419-7857. I have tickets also. Donate food items or monetary anytime at the VFW and just drop it off. And Death Valley National Park will be hosting the Death Valley Dark Sky Festival, March 1st through the 3rd. Everyone's invited to attend this free night sky and space science festival. During the day, the Death Valley Dark Sky Festival rangers and scientists will lead guided hikes to explore the extreme environments of Death Valley and the similarities to other places in our solar system. During the exploration fair at Furnace Creek Visitor Center, visitors can talk to scientists, observe demonstrations, and attend planetarium talks. Families are also encouraged to attend hands-on space science programs designed specifically for children. For more information, go to nps.gov. News 46 Weather Cam is brought to you by Glenn Lerner Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Take a look outside on that Glenn Lerner Weather Cam. Beautiful skies, a little bit of wind going on. Michael Donahue will have more after this break. watching KPVM News 25, local coverage you can count on. Hello and welcome back to News 25. I'm Michael Donahue. Today's highs in Pahrump's 54 degrees, 57 in Amargosa, 70 in Death Valley, Beatty at 52, 40 in Goldfield, 37 in Tonopah, and 39 and 38 in Fallon and Fernley. For tonight, 34 in Pahrump, 33 in Amargosa, 44 in Death Valley, 29 in Beatty, way down at 15 in Goldfield and Tonopah, 
28 in Fallon, and 27 in Fernley. Tonight in Pahrump, partly cloudy skies, a low of 34 degrees, our average is 36. Sunset at 525 p.m., winds out the south-southeast at 9 miles per hour, gusts up to 24, and a 20% chance of rain. For tomorrow, we have mostly sunny skies, a high of 50 degrees, a low of 32. Sunrise at 6.30 a.m., winds out the south-southwest at 7 miles per hour with 10 mile per hour gusts, and our humidity at 53%. Looking ahead to our seven day, we have a 40% chance of rain this Sunday. And on Monday and Tuesday, that sunny skies are coming back. And then the clouds are going to make a U turn and come right back over us Wednesday on Wednesday. We do have another chance of rain coming next Thursday and Friday, although it's too early to have a percentage at this time. Looking at our temperatures, on Saturday, we have a high of 50 degrees. And on Sunday, we're going to drop down to 45. And then we're just going to hang out around those mid 40s all through next Friday. For our overnights, we're just going to be dancing around between those low 30s and high 20s, just between 26 and 32 degrees all week long. So now we throw it back to the desk with Deanna. Thanks, Michael. Well, everyone's invited to join the Seroptimists who are holding their Bunko Tournament tonight at the Valley Conference Center located at 800 East Highway 372. The doors open at 5 p.m. And everyone here at KPVM-TV and Ace Country Radio want to wish our own Darby O'Donnell, a very special happy birthday. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell from all of us here at KPVM-TV and Ace Country Radio. Have a great weekend. See you back here on Monday.